hello hello welcome welcome to friday craft with me we're going to be working on the spring journal again today um we probably have three or so videos left for the spring journal before we move on to a new project and so i just wanted to kind of check in with you guys see where you guys are at um if anyone needs uh, any help with anything, if they have any questions, pop them in here. Either I or someone else in chat will answer them for you. And then also, um, we're going to make some things. I'm going to show you where I am at in mine, and um, we can talk about where we want to go from there. Hello, Lisa Marie. Hello, Lenny. Welcome. Welcome, Cheryl. Hello. <laughs> so yeah, just a relaxed craft with me. We are not going to go three hours tonight. Normally, we're on from every Friday from um, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. However, today we are going to be a shorter, probably hour and a half-ish, maybe two hours crafting time. Hello, Heather. So yeah, a little bit of a shorter night. Um, I just have a lot going on, as you guys know. <laughs> and um, fitting the crafting time in is getting kind of difficult. Hello, Cindy. So yeah, that's what we're doing, working on that spring journal. Like I said, hopefully about three more weeks of these videos with the spring journal before I wrap up mine and then I'll move on to a smaller project in between the spring journal kit and the next journal kit. So if this is your first time here, first time watching, what happens is, is I create journal kits in mass, like around 36 of them. They're all exactly the same journal kit. And then I sell the journal kit. People get the journal kit. Then we all craft together and make the journals from that kit. You can add other supplies. Most of us add other things that we have to the journals. And then, um, yeah, so you just make whatever you want to make. You don't have to make what I'm making. You don't have to make yours look like mine. You can totally do your own thing with it. I encourage you to do your own thing. And then as we progress, you know, video after video, we work on different parts of the journal. And then at the end, we, you know, kind of <laughs> take a breather in between this kit and the next kit. Um, we also post all of our makes along the way into um, a Facebook group called Junk Journal Junction. Vanessa uh, Clemens, who is my moderator during my Tuesday night sales, she's the moderator for, or she actually owns that group. And so um, the group on Facebook, and that's where we post. So if you are not posting, I encourage you to post what you are making. Even if it's not this project, I encourage you to post what you're making um, over there so that we all can see, so that we can support each other. Um, it's important to share our work with others, not only for ourselves, right? Because people are kind and they say, yes, you know, it's, it's, it's reaffirming, right? To share your work with others and have them say it's pretty or they like it. But also it's inspiring to others and it gives others joy to see your work. So it's kind of, you know, a win-win for everybody. Hello, JMH. <laughs> so this kit that we're working on now, the Spring Journal kit has sold out. And usually I have a lot of them. Like I made 36 this time and I made more than 36 last time. And so... Um, I usually have them. However, this time we used an antique quilt for the cover. And so that was a limited supply, right? Um, sure, I could have went out and probably bought another quilt and cut it up and used it. But for this time, we just had that set number. Next time around, I will try to aim for more like 50. I'm not sure exactly on the theme of the next journal kit. Um, I might do a boho journal kit next time, or it might be the time after that we do boho. I'm not sure yet. Just depends on if I'm doing 50 kits and my kits are quite large, they include a lot of stuff. I have to make sure I have enough to do 50 of, right? So anyway, we'll figure that out. But a boho one is definitely coming either this next time or the time after that. Ah, thank you, Lisa Marie. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I have been seeing a lot of your posts on social media, and it's not only that one Facebook group. You're welcome and encouraged to post it on Instagram, to post, you know, any other Facebook group you're a member of, Boho Daydreams, any of the other Facebook groups. It's just nice to post. Everyone, when they join a Facebook group, right, they mostly join so that they can see others works so that they can be inspired by them or get ideas from them or 
you know, maybe you just, you don't have the time to craft, but you just want a little bit of beautiful journals in your day, right? So you just go over there, you take a look and see at the other posts and, you know, you either gain something from it or you don't. Most of the time I go over there, I am just completely blown away by the beautiful works that other people do. Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing. I haven't seen them yet. Hello, Vanessa. <laughs> The kit last time, the first time was 40, last time was 50, and it just depends on how much stuff is in the kit. But I try to make the kits so that they are basically um, an entire journal. So you're going to have to have a little bit of basic supplies, glue, scissors, you know, whatever else. A few other things probably to make a completely fully decorated journal. I give you lots of uh, vintage ephemera, my whole thing. Um, if you're new, I have live sales every single Tuesday and I sell um, all the stuff you see behind me, the antique paper, ledgers, things like that. So my kits generally are very heavily vintage or heavily antique themed. This one that we're doing now is the least um have a, the least heavily vintage that I've done. And um, yeah, it's just something different. I, I can't do the same thing all the time because I would get bored with it also. So yeah, we're just working through this one and we will get to the next one. I'd like to take a little bit of a break and make some smaller projects in between kits. It's just for me, it, it, I can't go back to back journal. I have to have some other crafting time. <laughs> Hey, on the big screen. Uh oh, that could be scary, Cheryl. That could be scary. <laughs> Vanessa, are you crafting along tonight? <laughs> hello, JMH. Did I not say hello to you? Hello, anyone else I missed? I'm not sure. JMac. Hello, JMac. Well, thank you for stopping in and saying hello. So on Tuesdays, we have a, a live sale um, at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every single Tuesday, and it has different items every Tuesday. And then on Fridays, we do Craft With Me at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we make whatever we're making, right? And so you can craft along with me, or you can make a completely different project. You can just sit there, fussy cut. You could just be cooking dinner. <laughs> it doesn't really matter what you're doing as long as you're hanging out with us and chatting with all of your friends in chat. Hello, Miss Sheila. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> you can slow stitch and watch. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> All right, let me flip the camera down so that we can get a look at what I have been up to. So, gosh, it seems really dark here today. Really dark, like, in camera. So, um, I don't know if I can make it brighter. Doesn't it seem super dark tonight? Oh my gosh. Why does it seem so dark? Hang on a second. <laughs> Let me check the camera and see what the heck's going on because it is so dark tonight. What is wrong with it? Here we go. I think it just randomly has been resetting itself for no reason. So there I brightened it up. That's probably a little too bright, but we're going to go with it. <laughs> crazy cameras if it's not the cameras it's the microphone every single time it changes <laughs> the next kit will probably be you know in the 40 50 dollar range it just depends on what the materials cost me that go into the kit so if it's a whole bunch of really expensive things then it goes you know i probably wouldn't do a kit more than 50 anyway but yeah <laughs> all righty so here's where i'm at you can see i have three piles that's because i'm doing three of these journals um i had some kit the quilt pieces that had some heavy damage on them and one of them was not the correct size so i kept the two really damaged ones for myself to make extra journals out of and then this one is the original one that came from the kit so this See, now it's way too washed up. <laughs> I will not fight with my camera all night long, I promise you. So let's just try it there. So this is the quilt piece that came in the kit. And you can see that I have done a little bit of work to mine. I've gotten mine started, right? So 
everyone got a quilt piece and this is an antique vintage uh, antique grandma's flower garden um patchwork quilt and so what i did is i cut it up so everyone could have a piece of it inside of it it is just a beautiful um plain pink fabric and it is all hand quilted it's beautiful right but then I wanted to add a little bit more embellishments to it, right? Um, you could leave just the cover plain like this and have that be your journal cover. However, I wanna embellish mine a little bit. So you can see that I have started doing some applique of um, some embroidery pieces on it. And I'm going to continue adding pieces to it. I'm not gonna make mine overly busy. I don't want this um, to become just full of things. I want to see that quilt piece. This quilt that I cut up for us was several hundred dollars. And I know some people will be upset because I cut it up. However, it was not perfect. It did have a couple little holes. But the reason why I'm telling you that is because the quilt is actually important, right? Like, for design, um, if you didn't like the quilt, of course you could cover it completely up and, and not care about what I'm saying. But I chose it for us because it had spring colors and because the quilt pattern itself um, is called Grandma's Flower Garden and we're doing a spring floral journal, or at least that's the kit that I designed and where you take it from there is what you, you know, whatever you feel you wanna do with it. So anyway, I just cut out these are vintage doily pieces that I cut out and I applique on to my quilt cover. And this one has a little extra patch up here at the top. On the back, more than likely, I'm gonna leave it plain. Then on the inside of this one, I stitched up a little pocket out of some other embroidered, um, it's like actually embroidered like eyelet, but I stitched up a little pocket and you notice that I didn't sew it down in the center because when we sew our signature in the center, it's naturally gonna create that place where this pocket is sewn down in the center. So that's that. I may, I probably will add a little piece of applique up here in the pink section. I just have not gotten that far yet. So that's that cover. And then I've started assembling the signature. That one's pretty much ready to go. This one is not ready to go, but I've started it. This is the second journal cover. And so he looks like that. And all I did to him is the same thing where I've taken some um, vintage embroidery and I've cut it out a design piece that I liked and applicate it to the front of the journal. I really like this one because this quilt piece has black and white floral little daisies just like these ones here so I thought this was a good piece plus this quilt piece um, you know it started out white but it's off-white now and this was done on off-white um, fabric for the embroidery so I liked that and then I put a pocket in this one as well it's just a little eyelet pocket and if you notice I left all of my pockets stick out the bottom so that we will have some little detail hanging out the bottom so those are those two. This is the third journal. This is the one that was not like, this one is even small. So this is the original one everyone got. This is a little bit smaller, but it will still work, right? And this one is a lot smaller, but it will still work. So this is this guy. This is what he looks like. And he is nine by six, but he, he is just a little bit narrower and an inch or an inch and a half um, shorter, but he'll work just fine. So again, I did the same thing. I'm not finished with any of these covers. This is just where I'm at at this point. So I put on my applique piece that I cut out. It's gorgeous. And this color right here, it's kind of showing navy blue on camera. And it is like a violet purple um, it kind of leans towards navy, but anyway, the, these really match that. They look nice with it. And then on the back, you've got that. And then this guy, you can see he's got a little lace hanging out. And that's because I use the blue lace that I included with the kit for the pocket on this one. Um, and so he'll be sewn in there in the signature. And he'll be fine. So those are the journal covers so far. Let me take a minute to read some comments. <laughs> uh oh 
there a question up here somewhere? <laughs> Hey, Heather, if you have questions, you can message me on Facebook Messenger. I'm Kate Marshall. If you want to message me on Facebook Messenger, I have my phone right here and I can answer you directly too if you want. Oh, J Mac, thanks for the thumbs up request. It really does help me. I appreciate you guys doing that. Thank you. Thank you. YouTube likes the thumbs up. <laughs> Ooh, package ready to send for Monday. Awesome, awesome. I don't know whose package it is, but it may be mine. I'm not sure. <laughs> Playing with sari trim. Ooh. I love sari trim. Hello, Penny. Welcome. Hello, Joyce. The Sheila's things are really gorgeous. Yes, they are. Wendy, hello. I, if I didn't say hello to you, Heather is asking a question. Can anyone answer my typed question? When I sell every Tuesday, is it the same kit from the previous Tuesday? So on Tuesdays, what I sell are antique documents, antique ledger pages, things like that. Um, a bunch of antique paper ephemera and antique books. Most of my stuff is from France and is in French. So French ledgers, French books, um, French ephemera. I do have some American ephemera that we do from time to time also in mix in. Is that your question? The kit, I won't have a new kit available for a while. So if you're looking to purchase a journal kit, um, the best thing to do is to pay attention to my Facebook page because I will post when that kit is available on my Facebook page as well as bring it to the live sales on Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Jay Mac. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Yeah, the, the kits, they do, we take like maybe six weeks to work through one journal. Now, normally when we, you know, if we were just at home and we were sitting down to make a journal, it would not probably take us six weeks. A lot of us, it would be very short. And some of us, it would probably take a year. It just depends, right? But the video series is about six videos long, one video a week for six weeks. That's my goal anyway. It might stretch longer. Eventually, it might be shorter. I just play it by ear and kind of look and see how everyone is. And so that's why I was saying like maybe three more videos. Um, if you guys feel like I'm rushing you, you guys let me know. But probably about three more weeks, three more videos, and we will get it finished up. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to have a kit. Cheryl is absolutely correct. You do not have to have a kit. You are always welcome to come here on Friday Craft With Me's and just make something similar that you already have supplies for, or you can make something completely different. You can hang out with us and just chat and, you know, um, hang out with your friends and chat. That's totally fine. Um, you don't have to do anything different than you normally would do. Like if you're just, you know, working on a project already, just come and hang out and work on that project with us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's get started on what we're going to do. Just to show you, the journal covers are, you know, they're getting there. I would say adding a couple more, maybe two little embellishments here or there on each cover, and then I'm going to call the covers done. Um, I don't want to just leave it where it's got just a thing of embroidery. I wanted to try to stitch around the embroidery. However, I'm not sure I'm going to do that. That was just kind of an initial thought, but then I got pockets in and everything else. So we may not stitch around them, um, but I would like to add a little couple other elements. And the things that I'm looking at adding are um, little yo-yos. You guys, some of you have been with me a long time and you remember I have some feed sack yo-yos from a yo-yo quilt 
And I would like to add a couple of those. Basically, they look like quilted flowers. So I would like to add a couple of those and then maybe do some embroidery with um, little strings coming out of the center of the yo-yos. So that's kind of what I'm thinking of adding. I might add a lace piece or doily or something else. It, I just have to um, kind of work through it. And when my brain tells me it's done, then it's done. But I'm not trying to over embellish these journal covers. I just want simple things on them. Um, so hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of where I'm at, where I'm going with journal covers. Anyway, like I said, I'm going to put some little cut out of vintage embroidery inside as well, just because the inside cover is very plain. Even if we stick stuff in the pocket, I still feel like it needs a little something. So I will be doing that. Anyway, for the signature that's put together, let me just pop these off to the side because I don't think we will be working on them right now. Let me pop them off to the side. This one is the one that I started with with you guys. And this was where we were at with the signature. So you can see we have a lot of room and I do still need to do a little final trim around the edge. So don't let that bother you. But this is where we were at with the signature. So it's a nice healthy signature. We haven't put any or I haven't put any pockets in mine yet at all. But it's just a nice healthy signature of all different kinds of things. Um, there's some envelopes and other things we tucked in that could be pockets, but nothing has officially been glued in yet. So once we get that going and this gets rounded out and full, right, you can see where I don't want it to be too busy. <laughs> I can't stress that enough. Don't make it too busy, <laughs> right? Because this is already a busy pattern. Anyway, so tonight I would like to maybe get this one sewn in. I don't know. How are you guys feeling? Are you guys getting to the point where you want to sew in your signatures yet? I was talking with Lisa Marie earlier and we were talking about sewing in the signature. You guys getting close to wanting to do that? I did find um, that I wanted to add this. It's just a children's handwriting paper. And honestly, I just needed some more writing space in here. And then I was thinking of adding this vintage map page in here as well. This is more of like your traditional style junk journal. Sure, we have some French ledger in here and, you know, a couple of other things, but a lot of people start out making this, you know, traditional style of junk journal. So we could add in these, we could sew in that signature. That's one project we could do. I also want to do the closures on all of them. And for my closures, I'm just going to put eyelets in and I'm going to use the seam binding that came in the kit for a closure. However, I don't want just the seam binding as it is. I want to crinkle up my seam binding. So I want to do that on camera with you guys. Some people have never crinkled seam binding. They don't know what I'm talking about or how to do it or anything like that. So if it's okay with you guys, we will start with that. That way it can dry as the night goes on and then maybe I can actually use it to close my books. Hello, Becca. And if you do have questions, if you type them in all caps, um, also anyone in chat, you are welcome to answer questions. I know you guys are really good at that anyway, but just so you know, you are welcome to answer questions if you see them. Yo-yos. <laughs> awesome awesome yeah they are, they are different prices based on what the cost of everything that goes into it but I am very aware and try to keep the cost of the kits down because no one wants to overpay for a kit and you know it it's not really about like if I was to sell all the individual components I would probably sell them for more than what the kit cost but that's not really the purpose. The purpose is I want to create kits so that everyone can craft along and have a good time doing this project together. So anyway, crinkling seam binding. This piece is long enough for a closure. So we have one and you guys know, sorry for my arm reaching in there. I need two more. So I'm just gonna go ahead and crinkle them all at the same time. So for a closure, um, you just want to make sure that you have whatever length you think you need. And because we're going to crinkle this, you have to keep in mind that this is going to shrink. 
So for me, for, you know, crinkled seam binding, I'm going to want like, I don't know, a yard and a half to two yards. And I know that's a lot, but then there's leftover that you can use for topping tags and things like that. So if you are trying to crinkle an entire thing of seam binding, um, if you, I got this at Zipper Stop on Etsy. Um, I don't really know where else to get seam binding. I would prefer the Hug Snug brand, but apparently they don't make that anymore. So anyway, I'm using half inch rayon seam binding. And if you're trying to crinkle a whole entire spool, please cut it to length before you crinkle it. If you crinkle this seam binding as one whole piece, you are gonna be untangling it for years. <laughs> I did that and regretted it very much. So anyway, cut it to length first. And then I didn't bring um, a, a piece of parchment or anything like that in here. So I'm just gonna use like a cellophane bag just so that I can do this without ruining my desktop. So you just want to take your seam binding after you cut it. And I know a lot of you know how to do this, but some of you don't. So take it, put it on your little table, your countertop or your sink or whatever you're doing, right? Probably over weekend for me. <laughs> so then you want to wet it. Crinkling seam binding is super fun. You just want to wet it down. Now, if I was, you know, not in here, I would probably just get it wet. Get it wet in the kitchen sink or wherever you're at, right? So just I'm not trying to make it super wet, but you can see I'm just scrunching it in my hand and it is already getting crinkled. So just wet it down and crinkle it with your hand. Now, if you're doing a whole entire spool, because you know a lot of people, um, they're crinkling seam binding and selling it on Etsy and a lot of people buy it. I buy it from people who do that. Some people like Sheila, they hand dye their seam binding. So she has many, many colors that are not, like you can't just buy a spool of seam binding. So Sheila does beautiful hand dyed seam bindings and she often um, tailors those colors to her velvet packages and other packages she's working on. So if you're looking for crinkled seam binding or dyed seam binding, you can check with Sheila. Sheila is Boho Daydreams. Um, she has a Facebook group called Boho Daydreams. But if you're looking at crinkling some you already have, this is the way to do it. And then if I was really going to crinkle this, the way I normally do, I would roll it into a ball, a tight ball, and then I would take rubber bands and, you know, if you have a big ball because you did a whole thing of seam binding, wrap rubber bands around it to keep it tight like this. Or you can, if you dyed it, you can take the ball and put it into a Ziploc bag and squish it down into the corner of the Ziploc bag and then wrap the rubber bands around it. Basically, you're trying to get it to where it dries while it's still into this ball and that's where you get the best crinkle. If you don't want it heavily crinkled then you're going to just crinkle it a little and scatter it back out like this on the table right and then you're just going to let it dry from there just naturally air dry and then it will be crinkled. Pretty simple but a lot of people didn't know how you crinkled seam binding especially if you were trying to crinkle it in mass to be able to sell it. So um, I used to dye seam binding and all the different colors and sell it. However, I don't do that anymore because I don't have time. But <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to let that dry. And then we'll use it for our closures. Check in comments. <laughs> okay, so we will let that dry and then we will put our closures in. For right now, um, you guys have seen me do it before, but I'm just gonna put an eyelet. So I will measure the center and I will put an eyelet 
um, in the center of the back and the front cover, and then I will thread my seam binding through there. If we have time when we're done and that's dry, then we will do it. For now, let's move on to another project. So um, there is a challenge that Cheryl is running in the Boho Daydreams Facebook group. And it is for an over the page embellishment. Um, Cheryl, if you're still here, I'm not sure exactly what you're calling it. I think you're calling it over the page embellishment. But I watched Cheryl's YouTube video. Now, this was probably a week or 10 days ago. This The challenge on Boho Daydreams um, is open to anyone on Boho Daydreams. All you need to do is go over there and um, basically watch Cheryl's video where she explains how to make the over the page embellishment. And then it's not a challenge where you have to mail it to somebody else or anything like that. Whatever you make, you're going to be keeping. And then you make it and post your make, just a picture of your make in the group. And it's just a fun way to craft along with others and to see others people's takes, like, you know, another person's take on the same idea. So I have not made these before. I am going to attempt to make them with you guys now. The events tab, that's perfect, Lisa Marie. Page topper flip over. See, I knew there was an official name. <laughs> Page topper flip overs. Awesome. Something new for you to do? Yep, there's always something new to do, right? Always. That's the fun thing about being a crafter. There's always something new to get excited about and do. So for these, oh my goodness, page topper flip over. <laughs> we need to pick out a sturdy cardstock or light cardstock. That's what I'm going to be using. Um, I might even try to use braille paper. I'm not sure how that would work out, but I basically just need to find a base for our page topper. So let me look and see what I've got here. I'm doing this kind of on the fly. I'm doing the challenge, but I'm also doing it with you guys. <laughs> so when I'm done with this, as long as they turn out, then I'll be posting them in Boho Daydreams. Page topper flip overs. Hmm. So I'm curious to see if we could use a tag. Because, you know, um, let me score this because it's not, well, maybe it will fold okay if I don't. But anyway, what if we used a tag? I know a lot of people um, are members of Boho Daydreams. If you guys are not aware, Cheryl's in chat. You can ask her all about this. Page topper flipovers. So, like, the idea is this is a journal page. This is a journal page, and I think it goes over the top like this. Now, Cheryl, you're going to have to guide me through this. So then I was thinking if we use a tag, so there will be an embellishment on this side of the page, right? Because we're going to decorate both sides of this. But if we use a tag, then I have this cute little hole right here that I can dangle something from. So I was wondering about using a tag for one. You made them out of tags? Okay. Now, Cheryl, you tell me if I'm not making this right. <laughs> okay. So we will make one out of a tag. What else can we make one out of? I was wondering about making it out of Braille paper, but I need sturdy Braille paper. Let me grab a piece of Braille paper. Okay, so here's a piece of Braille paper. You guys know what Braille paper is? Braille paper is like this with all the dots on it. So how long, I mean, is there a maximum length? I don't know. Let's try making one out of some Braille paper. And then I'll probably just make a plain base one. Um, I'm 
normally I probably would cut that on an actual paper cutter, but <laughs> for right now, we're going to do it like that. I have too much stuff in the top of my cart and there's no place for me to put my scissors. <laughs> too much stuff. Okay. So I did not refill my art glitter glue. I told myself at least three times this week that you needed to refill your art glitter glue. I guess maybe I'll have to square that up. But anyway, we could do one out of this. And then it would slide over the page like that. That's a really, really big one. I'm going to come back and make that one smaller, I think. So let me cut it for real with paper cutter. Oh, I haven't tried cutting braille paper that I'm aware of with the paper cutter, so I think it just slices right through it, but we'll see. I just want to take a hair off of this side and then a hair off of the next side, the other side. See, it was doubled up and it didn't get all of it, but good enough. Let me take a little bit off this one, too. And that time it did. Are we square now? A little bit more. So, how should we decorate these? Doesn't want to cut this side as easily. I have to put that back in. So, for spring journals, I could decorate it with some flowers, obviously. How do we want to decorate these? Braille paper in the Tim Holtz cutter would be fine if you don't have it folded like I did. So I'm going to cut off a little bit more. Making sure that I'm square. There we go. Okay. I think I like this size better to go over this page. I don't want it to take up the entire page. It might be still too long, but we're going to go with that for now. Birds, flowers, German scrap. <laughs> All of my favorite things. That's what you're telling me. So, you could also do this like with wallpaper as a base. Um, there was wallpaper in your kit. You could use that if you haven't found a place for it yet. This is just a little fuzzy on this side. I don't know that I mind that. Braille paper is very cottony. So I'll try making one out of Braille and see how that goes. And a tag and maybe just regular cardstock. Lace buttons and a griffin. <laughs> so cute. Yep. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Okay. So then the next one, I just want like a nice piece of cardstock. Let's do a more modern cardstock. Um, like regular scrapbooking paper. I don't get a chance to use regular scrapbooking paper very often. And so because the way that you make these, um, you know, you're going to have a front here and a front here, but it's folded. If you're going to use scrapbook paper, make sure that your pattern can be flipped over without being upside down or anything like that. So I could use that one. So what I'm talking about is if you used these bikes and you folded it in half, the bikes would be upside down on the other side. So you just want to make sure that you're using like a non-directional pattern of paper. There are some really cute ones in here. This is a really old paper pad, but there are some really cute ones in here. I'm really drawn to these golds because I never get to use these kind of papers, right? Like, I always have to use antique things. <laughs> That's normally the style that I go with, right? So let's make a couple. And I know I'm spending some time on this, but you also could write on the inside of it, right, Cheryl? So it doesn't have to be double-sided. You could use a white paper and... Um, like a single-sided paper. This is a cute guy. 
So I'm taking advantage of being able to use some modern scrapbook paper because I don't often get the chance. So I picked out those two. I think those are very easily decorated, right? I'm going to put this one with the gold back in there. I think I found I'm going to save that gold for the boho. Just checking to make sure. Ooh, there was pretties in here too. And pretties in this one. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to do these two. First things first, these little things have to come off. I mean, they don't really, but. Hello, cat. <laughs> Writing space on the underneath. Okay, perfect. So let's do those two. So I'm going to leave this, this blank copy dyed page here. So I'm wondering if I used six by six, is that going to be big enough to flip over? It'll be like a narrow one. So my journal pages at most are going to hold something that's five inches. It's a six inch journal, but I don't want to have it go all the way to the edge. So you can see I'm going to have to cut down my paper a little bit. So I'm going to cut it. I'm going to cut it to four. I'm going to go four and a quarter. <laughs> you can see the, hear the indecisiveness, four and a quarter. I think that's a good size. And then four and a quarter here as well. And now we have some little skinny tags or something to play with later. Let me get all of these little embellishments out of it. These are all the other soft things to embellish with. Okay. So these guys need folded in half. Now, will these banners look bad? I didn't think they would. No, they're okay. So here's a couple smaller ones. Now, are these going to be too small, though? Hello, Ruli story. Or bookmarks? Yes. No, I think they're good. Now, on the cardstock, like, it's a little floppy, but I'll crease it. Crease it, crease it. Okay, so let's see where we can go with these. Um, I need some backgrounds, right? Because we have bases, but now we need backgrounds. I would like... I would like to get some book page and this white frame on the Braille. So what do I have for book page? I just want some nice antique book page here. Sorry for my rustling around. I have this little bit of German French dictionary really long enough. This one is the right size. So I want to see some of the braille through it. So I'm just going to try to tear it where I think I want it. Do I want the braille showing at the bottom? Or do I want the braille showing at the top? I think I'm going to do it at the bottom, which is not normally where I do it, but we're going to do it there. And I'm going to take off all the way down to the page number and see how I like that. Now this is rag paper. 
So it tears a little differently than regular paper. Okay, so that's not enough real showing for me. And now I have too much because I have white up there. Yeah, I need another one. <laughs> Hopefully the whole night doesn't go like that. I just can't decide how much Braille I want. And of course, that was my only good German paper, right? No, there's got to be more in here somewhere. Okay, well, it's not Braille, but it will work. Or it's not German, but it will work. I like this color too. So this time I'm going to leave the top and I'm just going to tear off the bottom. Yes. Okie dokie. So then I need to find an image for behind my frame. And I know that in this bucket, I printed, this is my project bucket. So normally when I'm working on a journal, everything that I think I need is going into a project bucket. And then I can pull out as I need things. And I will show you guys also, I made some other ephemera um, when I was away from you guys. So I will show you that. I just saw it in here. It reminded me. Um, I'm looking for printed ruby and pearl photographs. Like here are some. And here are some. Let me pull out these ones. Normally, I don't just like wrinkle it all up like this, but I have so far in this bucket. Somewhere down here, there's some more pictures. And we are going to do that um, project, the mixed media project with the napkins. If you guys want to plan for that next time, we will do that together next time. The mixed media project with napkins. So... Here are the ruby and pearl images. That one's pretty cute. We could use her. Let me grab some scissors to cut her out with. Glue. You can glue too many envies. Together at the top and embellish, yes, and flip them over. Just rough cutting this because I'm only going to have a little piece left when I'm done anyway. So we're going to put her little portrait in there. So basically, I'm just going to cut around underneath my frame. Now, a normal person would probably just glue this frame down and then cut it out, but of course I'm not doing that. Okay, there we go. That's garbage. There's those. And I still want to use that for a project. Okay, here's where we're at on this one. Now, I still need another layer um, underneath that frame. To me, it, it needs something else, and I want it to be lacy. So what do I have in my giant? So you guys see this mess? Do you, do you see this mess? Do you guys know where this mess came from? All of this mess? And more mess and more mess. This mess came from all of that lace that I had to cut. <laughs> you know, when you cut lace um, off the spool, there's always like the odds and ends um, pieces. That's what this is, <laughs> this giant mess. But underneath of that, there's my layering lace. Excuse me, I have hiccups. So down here, we have this piece. And this is kind of delicate, right? And I don't know. Kind of delicate. I don't want to cover up the whole braille, though. I want some braille sticking out. And honestly, I want some book page sticking out too. 
that's an option. But what else do we have? We have this one. This is like very antique. -y. It's cute. Let's cut out a section of that. And everything I'm cutting right now is just rough cutting. I'm not worried about making anything perfect at this point. This one has the string on it from the antique store where I bought it from. How are we doing in chat? Hello, Michelle. <laughs> Organization is non-existent. I think we all start there and then eventually we realize that we cannot survive, we cannot create um, until we get some order to our chaos. I mean, some people, you know, they can just totally, I guess that's not true, right? Some people can create in a mess and they prefer to. I, however, cannot. So this piece is just too small and it's not working for that, but I'll put it off to the side and we'll find another thing for it. I think I'm going to have to use this white one, but I don't want it all square the way it is now. I need it to be more jaggedy. So I'm just going to jaggedy cut it. I think it just looks a little more vintage that way. That, that, that. I don't know if I love it. <laughs> I just honestly have been in one of those moods all day. I don't know if I love it. So we're going back without it, but we need to find something else to layer under there. There is a little bit of tool with dots on it. A little structure of the mess, yes. <laughs> I should be getting something similar soon. Hopefully yours is more organized. I did try to keep all of your lace not just a ball. However, whatever happens in shipping happens in shipping, right? Okay, so moving on. Under the book page, I it's just going to cover it all up, though. I just don't like the book page without something over it. I'm having an issue with the book page. Hang on just a sec. Let me see what's in my magical bucket of tricks over here. Ooh, we also have piano roll paper in this bucket of tricks. That would be a good layer. Piano roll paper. Um... What about a paper lace doily instead of a regular? I'm opening one of my packs of doilies. A lot of you guys have this, right? What about a paper lace doily? One of my favorites is this one because it has more open lace. So I tend to like that one for layering. I'm just going to fold the sticky part of this bag in. Sorry for crinkling. Lots of crinkling tonight. Okay. So before we go any further, I'm going to go ahead and glue this down because it's, <laughs> it's just falling everywhere anyway. <laughs> so I'm going to glue this by putting glue around... See, this is where I was like, I really should have refilled my art glitter glue. I'm putting a tiny little bit of glue around it. Because we're going to glue it down here in a second anyway. And then I'm going to flip my frame over and get it to where I want it to be. Like I said, a normal person would probably glue this and then cut it out. <laughs> but yeah, so that's better because now she's in there. Let's do some paper lace. I think I'm going to like that over this book page. So paper lace. Mm. Maybe just at the side. 
Still not my favorite. I don't want to cover up all the book page. I did not think this was going to be this difficult for me. Yeah, not feeling paper lace either. Okay, next. <laughs> for now, let's let that one sit for a minute. Let's work on another one just so that my brain doesn't explode from that one. <laughs> we will do it. I'm sure something will come to me here shortly. I just need to work on something else for a minute. So this guy, I know that I want him to have an image for a focal point on the front of him. Are these going to be too big? Did I print them smaller? Um, let's do a Tim Holtz one for this one. Because of the tag, let's do a Tim Holtz. It'll be easier because Tim Holtz stuff is already <laughs> fussy cut and everything else. So... He has giant ephemera pieces. I'm going to dump out one of the new packs so that I can play with it in a bucket. And then we'll put Tim Holtz person on it probably. So this is a dollar store bin and this is Tim Holtz palette. My favorite one that he's ever done. It's called palette. It's also the largest one that he's ever done. So there's that. And I like to keep them in a bucket so that I can flip through it easier and find what I need to decorate this guy with. Too big. I just need something for a background or a focal point. But I think I want to put a person on there. So that's beautiful. There's lots of good things in here. And I shouldn't have folded it like you don't have to fold it in half either. You could have a shorter piece in the back. I don't know if I have another tag, but maybe you could try doing that too. It's not something I can use with Tim Holtz people. There's a little French, little French postcard, little garden postcard, and we could put a person on that. Let me see what else there is in here. Here's a big flower, a little flower. I don't know how much of this you guys can see, but there's quite a few little pieces in here. Hmm. I want to do it with a Tim Holtz person. So here is Tim Holtz people. She's not going to fit. She's too big. I think these are his older people. I'm not sure. He's made several um, iterations of these, these people now. She could sit there if we found something for her to sit on. Cheryl's like, why are you doing this? You're taking so long. I'm sorry, guys. I'm really indecisive today. There's like a little, little Victorian woman. She's kind of the right size, but this little girl is cute. I like the Victorian woman, but I would like a little bit bigger of a woman, I think, and then cut her off, chop her legs off. girl and her dogs. Let's see the girl and her dog. My stomach is making really weird noises. It's not hungry. I don't know what it wants. Okay, so for these guys, I'm going to dump them in the back of this bin. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm going to put book page back there. And then I'm going to layer up a decorative piece. And then a Tim Holtz person and a Tim Holtz little label. Um, maybe this book page. Okay. Yeah, that will look nice. Blue stick. So what is everyone else working on tonight? Thanks, Spring. I'm trying to make a variety of different ones. <laughs> a variety of different ones. So I'm going to cover most of this. For now, I just, I don't know. I just want to get it on there. But at the same time, it needs to be a little smaller. No, maybe I'm right about there. Just a hair off. Okay. Think spring. I did bring birds and butterflies and all kinds of spring embellishments in here. Yes, I like it. Now, I don't want to cover up the little whole part of it. So there's like a title page from a book. It's just a little bit sticking out right there. Okay. The title page from a book. I'm gonna glue that on. Where is my glue book? Homework, uh-oh. Homework. I liked homework when I was a kid. I liked school. I know a lot of people, you know, they didn't enjoy school, but I did. When I was, so I had an older brother and my older brother you know, got to go to school before me. And I was so sad when he got, when he went to school, <laughs> because before then it was just the two of us at home, you know, all the time. And then he had to go to school and I was so sad every day. I really missed having my brother there to hang out with me. And so when it was my turn to go to school, I could not wait. Plus, I would always see all these amazing things that he would like, you know, bring home and I don't know. It was just fun. I liked school. I already used that guy somewhere. I am bound to determine to use this temple stuff. I just need something to go with my person. Yeah, 100% on that homework. <laughs> Joyce is making journal cards. Awesome, Joyce. Awesome. I'm going to be making some tags later today. I'll show you guys what I worked on and made whenever we were apart. Goodness, I cannot find something to go back there today at all. Okay. So we were back to this, and now I don't like it because it's too big. Hang on a minute. So this bin has like little Tim Holtz flowers in it. Can we get like a giant flower with a person? Or is that too weird? I wanted the little dog, but his little tail and her little bow are sticking out anyway. And I need something else here. I have another bin of Tim Holtz things over here that I'm going through. It's like a little journal card or a little, little tag. No. Okay. I don't think I was meant for crafting right now, guys. 
And I don't think I was meant for crafting right now. I mean, I know <laughs> it should be simple, right, to just put some things on this, but I'm just really struggling with it. Like, here's some tickets. Can I get the little girl with the dog and the tickets? Can I put the tickets this way, maybe? And then another element. Here's a bingo card. Okay, I don't hate the bingo card. Maybe the bingo card will work there. <laughs> Your clothesline is, my clothesline is coming right along. <laughs> Tie the knot, I have to read now. All I saw was chocolate and friends. That sounds amazing. Chocolate and friends. Awesome. Do we want like little stamps or do I want an actual label? I think the journal, the little, little bingo card is just ever so slightly too big. I'm determined, guys. I'm determined. We're not abandoning Tim Holtz thing right now. I don't know what I want there, but I think I want a flower. <laughs> don't abandon me. I promise I will make up my mind and find something here shortly. Here's some little spring flowers, and they have, like, yellow in them. It's just a whole lot of stuff. And you can't really even see my book page anymore. What do you guys think of this? Is this too much and you can't see my book page? Should I cover the whole thing with book page? I think so. Let's do more book page. <laughs> Are you guys done yet? <laughs> You're like, why did we turn into this channel today? So I'm going to glue the whole book page over the whole entire tag because I need more book page back there. And then I'm going to put a hole reinforcer and punch my hole so that we still have the hole because that was the whole point of me using a tag. And this one I'm just going to tear off afterwards. Hopefully that is somewhat straight. Cool. I was making stuff before I even turned on the camera. And then sometimes it's like you turn on the camera and it's just gone. It's gone. I don't know where it went, but it went somewhere. And my stomach is making those weird noises like it's growling, but it's not growling and it's not hungry. Some of you know, but some of you don't know. Um, I had a gastric sleeve surgery in September. And so my stomach has felt like an alien stomach, like not my own stomach ever since then. It's super strange. Okay. Let me get rid of those. <laughs> I apologize if you can hear the noises. <laughs> it's just making growling noises. So let me poke the hole for this. And then... I will put the whole reinforcer back on. Hopefully I have one that's already inked so it doesn't take forever. It is really hard to craft live sometimes. It just is. Like I want to be here and I want to, you know, have fun and hang out. But sometimes the cre creativity is just like, mm, not today, girl. <laughs> mm. I don't know. Show us made items. I definitely will. 
put the spring flowers with the framed lady. Mm, maybe. I was trying to keep that one more neutral, but we'll see. I am getting somewhere with this one. I promise. I am getting somewhere. See, I needed the, the writing of the book page to be higher and lower. It just didn't look right to me the way I had it before. So there is actually, in fact, two um, book pages on here, but no one knows that other than us. Which way do these flowers go? I think this is the stem of them. I don't know. Maybe I'll just put them where I want them to go. So I think I'm getting somewhere with that. Yes? No? Maybe so? I think that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> the mojo working. Usually I'm okay with that. Let me put readers on because that's the other half of the problem. Is I really cannot see anymore without readers. And I don't know what happened. It was just like all of a sudden one day I couldn't see anymore. And I've never worn glasses before in my life. And I know people say it's because I'm a certain age, but... Whatever. <laughs> now, if you were inking, you could ink this. Um, usually with Tim Holtz things, I probably would ink it. Excuse me. I am so sorry. <laughs> now, that one actually was um, a little burp. Yes, it was. Sorry about that. My stomach is not my own. I am not responsible for whatever comes out of its mouth. <laughs> I'm so sorry. The new people are never, ever coming back. <laughs> They're never coming back. Oh, my gosh. So this is real. It's real life crafting. And yeah, there's no editing. There's no cutting things out. Okay, I still don't know which way these flowers go. Or if it matters. I think they might go like this. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know where to stick them. So we're just going to stick them. And there's my girl. So that's what we ended up with. I'm not sure, you know, if it's the best, but I still have a hole. His little tail is, oh, well, his little tail just, tail just got torn off. But his little tail is just ever so slightly covering the hole. There it goes. So there he is. I don't think it's bad. Now, we have to do this side. I know, it took an hour to do that. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> some protein. I do need some protein probably, but um, after you've had that surgery, that's pretty much all you're allowed to eat. So I don't know. It's just throwing a fit right now. It does this all day long, every day, just usually not as bad. And you know, it's the first time I've actually had to burp on camera, but yeah, that happened. So anyway, that's that. Do we want a little label down there or are we like overdoing it at this point? Like I could not really a white one, but I could do a little label down there maybe. At this point, I'm just going to stick as much stuff on this as I possibly can. Somewhere there are some other little labels. It doesn't add anything to it. It needs to have a border or something. So that you can see it. There's a little number. Whew. See, it's still doing it. It's crazy. It <laughs> it's just growling, but not really growling. I'm not sure what its problem is. 
Okay, here's a cute little ticket. You want to go purple? Do a cute little ticket. I have Roxy Creations labels printed too. So we might just put a little spring label from her kit. I saw those in this bucket here a second ago. Let me find those again. Here they are. Roxy Creations um, little spring labels. Is there one that looks like it would work? So here in Arizona, where I am, it is springtime. However, it went from being like 55 to being, um, I don't know if those are the right colors, to being 87, basically overnight. And so I've had to turn the air conditioning on. The air conditioning at my house is on a programmable thing, right? And um, it turns itself up all the time because I used to work during the day and no one was home. However, now that I'm home all the time, I cannot for the life of me remember how to program the thermostat. So it constantly turns itself up when I turn it down. And I know most people are like, you're using air conditioning, but here, if it's even, you know, high 70s, you need the air conditioning to be on. <laughs> There's that. Oh, I guess it goes this way. There's that label. I don't know if we want the label or not the label. You guys can vote on the label. It's not intestine sounds, it's actual upper stomach because that's all I had was the gastric sleeve. It's really just like a growly stomach. Yeah, it's, it's a process, but it is going really, really well. I do have to send a message to my son. Okay, asking him to turn the air down for me. <laughs> no label. Not ready for 87. Yeah, that's a nice day for us, but we do have to have the air conditioning. And hello, Vicky. I didn't even say hello. Hello, hello. You know, I had caffeine. I have been having caffeine because Vanessa, um, Vanessa is a bad influence on me. I kind of think the label is all right. I'm just not sure if it's clashy with the yellow behind it. So, I think I like the label better than I like the purple ticket, but I'm not entirely sold on either one of those. I mean, what about this label? Is it just my label choice that I'm unhappy with? <laughs> yes, clashing. See, I love when people give their opinion directly like that because it's like so many people are just like, oh, yeah, it's great. It's fine. And honestly, if I really felt like one way or the other, I would just do it no matter what you guys say because that's just how people that create are, right? Like. You have to do what your um, eyes tell you look best, right? So I appreciate the direct answer, though. When I ask, I want to know. Okay, this label is just probably better. So it has the yellow and a tiny touch of purple. The only thing that I didn't like is that it doesn't have a border, an, enough of a border on it, but I think I'm just going to ink it and make a border. And then I will probably be happy with that side of that one. And then we will have like 15 million more to do. <laughs> Where is my ink? So I want a little more of a border. So I'm going to give it a little more of a border. And 
I'm doing it light at first. And then if I really truly want a border, I will make the whole edge dark, just like it had a border. Now see, I don't like it as much. And the reason why is because I think it needs to be inked in black. <laughs> I just think for this particular one, that's what I want to do with it. Do I have black? I do. Awesome. Now, I don't necessarily have a little foamy thing for a black one, but let's see what I can make happen with that. I'll use an old inker. And we'll put black sit around it. Yes, much better. I should have showed you guys before and after. But putting the black sit around it gave me that border that I was looking for. And it wasn't the ready um, vintage photo color. So the black set for the win on that one. Just doing a little bit more. Perfection. One side is completed. It only took three hours. And hopefully we survived. Now I have to change my little ink dauber thing or I will forget and put it into vintage photo. Let's glue this down so I can call that done. I'm going to try to use glue stick on that. Love it. Cool. Me too. It actually came out really, really nice. Like, um, you know, it was a process getting there. But <laughs> I like this. I think this is cute. So let's do that one. that's what it looks like on that side and then when we put it over a page that's what we have so far I can get this page open that's what I have so far now let's do this side so at least we can have one finished project um for this guy I still want to do Tim Holtz because it's going to go in the same journal, right? Like it's, it needs to be, in my opinion, similar because it's going to be used in the same project. So I don't want to do the same thing or the same type of thing. I want to do something a little bit different. What else do I have? These are those, what does he call these? Collage strips. These are the collage strips. So you can cut out little sections and use them as labels. You can cut out little pictures and use them as whole embellishments. These things are great for making clusters because it's a million little pieces of cluster material or mixed media things, right? So I was thinking maybe we could use part of a strip. Book page and part of a strip maybe. I don't know if I want to do this similar colors, right? Because it's similar or if I want to do a different color. one is nice. Very springy. Let's maybe think about using one of those. These are a bunch of flowers. Kodachrome squares. Yes, you could. I did a bunch of those the other day. I should have brought them in here. I made up a whole bunch of those we have to show them. So this is a pack of 
um, botanical and it's all those little flowers. So if you didn't get Anna Griffin flowers, Tim Holtz has a whole pack of botanical flowers too. So there's those. Let's see what we can pull out that will be springy. 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 Springy is kind of hard for me at the moment, I guess. I don't know. There's that. That's not bad. It fills up the thing, the space. It's good. He has butterflies in here also. You could just do a, a big butterfly with some really nice um, rag paper book page behind it. Let's look at a couple of those. So we need background, right? It's a blank space. We need background. For this background, I would like to use that piano paper that I saw in here just a minute ago. This is piano paper, piano roll paper. Piano roll paper is really fun to work with. However, it is a process, right? Um, just gluing it down can be a process. I think we'll go with it. I don't know for sure what we're sticking on top yet, but for now, I'm just going to glue down this piano roll paper. That's going to be my background. Basically, anywhere that you could use book page, you can use braille paper, piano paper, any of those other backgrounds. To grab a, a baby wipe. Music paper, yep. Music is actually a really good idea, Joyce. I probably would have stuck music and a butterfly together. My fingers are super, super inky. And when I touch the baby wipe and the glue here, um, it got ink everywhere. So I need to clean my fingers too. So I quit leaving ink. You have three rolls? <laughs> okay. Moving on. I've got glue stick all over it. You can decide whether you want, you know, the little lines everywhere or only some of the place some of the place I don't know somewhere covering some of it and so I'm just gonna kind of get what I get there basically and I'm gonna give this a minute to dry before I attempt to cut it however I will rough cut it out Um, so we'll let that set for a minute. We could do butterfly, but I think we can do better than just a big butterfly. This is just very one-sided. What if we did like, mm, it's too big for those. I think it's too big for everything. But I really want flowers. There's like these little lilac-y things. And can I get a strip of this there? I kind of feel like we're doing exactly the same thing as we did on the other side. This is just ever so slightly longer. And then no. so what you guys gonna do this weekend? I'm digging in my bin of ephemera again. I guess you guys can kind of see me. What are you guys gonna do this weekend? There's like a little playing card back.
Sorry, my phone is still on. Um, I don't feel like I'm seeing enough of the, the piano roll paper. It's just really getting covered up. Hmm. The lavender's all drying. Awesome. Spring cleaning and garden chores. Necessity, right? We do have to do that. I think I would like something a little bit different. I don't want to put another Tim Holtz person and I really want to use strip. How can I get a strip on here? I mean, you could just layer up things. But what else do I have over here? I have one of these vintage music cards. Can I get like a piece of vintage music card with the, with the piano roll paper? Let's cut it out. At this point, it's just can't see it without cutting it out. And then I'm going to ink this one when I'm done cutting around her bow right there because her bow sticks out ever so slightly. I'm going to ink the tag when I'm done just around the edges of it just lightly. I don't want to cut off the dog's foot either. Save the big piece and we'll toss the rest. So we're there. I don't really want to cover it all up, but I don't know how to get just that on there either. I can't get it all on there. Hmm. <laughs> Liquid Easter dye with coffee? Easter egg dye. Hmm, cool. I have seen videos where people are dyeing paper with Easter egg dye. I think it's similar to food coloring. Um, what if we did this guy now and the butterfly? I think I'm going to do this. I know I am really covering up a lot of things. I think I need this ticket to be smaller. What do you guys think about that? I mean, it's not the best, but it's it's stuff on a tag. <laughs> it's stuff on a thing. <laughs> I just need another layer, maybe. Hmm. Some other type of ephemera. What have I not used yet? I bring in a million things every time that I do a craft with me, and then I don't use half of them. Let me take a look behind me and see what else I have. A ticket. I can't cover up the people. Antique stores. I am going 
picking tomorrow at antique stores that are near me. My daughter is going to go with me. And yeah, so we're going antiquing tomorrow. Should be fun. This is a bag of Tim Holtz pictures, like portraits. I have the Anna Griffin flowers. I have some fussy cut botanicals that are just like the actual book pages. Um, maybe those would be better. Like. all different kinds. I don't hate that. But... Okay, so this 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 bag was a good bag. <laughs> so all of this are fussy cut botanical book pages where I just cut out all of the flowers. There's birds there. I guess there are some digitals in here because now I am seeing some digitals. So Just need to find a flower that we're happy with. Um, yeah, so we're going to go antiquing, see what I find. I usually do not find um, anything at antique stores. Because <laughs> you guys know I'm picky about what I buy, right? So I don't really find that much stuff, but it's fun to go and look all the same and you never know maybe there'll be something I saw a project or something that I thought we could use one of the last times I was there and I really you know should have probably gotten it for us because we could have made a journal out of whatever I was thinking of getting but I didn't get it so if it's still there I might get it this time in my area, there are several antique stores, but um, in Arizona, we don't really have the type of antiques that a lot of people in other parts of the country have. Um, Arizona, a lot of things just didn't come across the Mississippi here, right? So we just don't have all of the things everyone else has. Like when I go to Brimfield in Massachusetts, so you fly into Connecticut and then the Brimfield flea market is in Massachusetts. There is a lot of really nice true antiques there. But in Arizona, we don't really have that many antique stores that have a lot of antiques. They have a lot of vintage things, but not really a lot of antiques. So antiques are kind of a challenge here. Just trying to find the right botanical and it's proving difficult because everything is just proving difficult today <laughs> i think we're going to go with this purple flower so when you schedule lives it's just what it is right yes you may <laughs> i know i know I am picky about everything, though, and you guys know that. So, it's good to be picky, though. That just means that you're very choosy, right? And you choose only the best things. So, I could put a flower and a butterfly. I could put these and that big butterfly. I think I, if you guys haven't tell, I, I think I've decided to use this butterfly. He just doesn't quite fit with the flowers. That's where we're at if we use him. And I think he covers up those flowers too much. If I put these purple flowers on here, he's okay on there. He's not wonderful, but he's okay. What do you guys think? Or should I go back and do like the botanical postcard? And the green tickets. What do you guys think? 
You like the first flower? Lucky no good antique stores near you. Yeah, there isn't a lot of good what so what we would what okay. <laughs> the antique stores here are truly not antique stores. They're like vintage thrift stores with antique store prices. And I mean that in the nicest way. <laughs> However, for someone who um, used to own an antique store, it's very difficult for me to go into an antique store and see all kinds of things that are not antique. And in fact, very, very little of it is antique. And I know that they have to make their rent. So they're leasing their booths, their spaces to whoever pays their rent, you know, and I, and I get all of that, but it's just like, it's really hard to find antiques here. And it's just Arizona. Other places do not have that same problem because they have more supply of um, antiques or, you know, truly old things. So, yeah, it's kind of sad, but it's what it is. Um, I haven't been to an antique store here that I would say is my favorite. We basically just go and look around and find what we find. Yeah. Thrift store, we don't even have good thrift stores here though. There isn't really a lot to find. A little label maybe. Right corner, yes. <laughs> you like the double pink flower? You liked this one? This is actually an orange and a pink flower. But... So I was trying to like play with it, but. I just don't know. If we get it over here, we get more leaves. If we put it this way, we kind of cover everything. So I thought the scale was good with this one. I'm going to do it there. It just fits right in my brain this way. And then we'll put some kind of label on that, I guess. It's not really blowing my socks off, knocking my socks off. So, so I don't know about it, but yeah, so far I have created half of a project and it's taken me an hour and 20 minutes. There's just times like that. There's nothing I can do about it. Where it's just difficult. I don't know what to say. It just is. And then I just keep layering and layering and layering until I find something that I like. An hour and 45? Yes, Joyce. Yes. <laughs> so if I layer all of this on here, we have this. I could pull this flower up a little more. And then the butterfly and then the tickets. Again, though, you do not see any of my background. I think it's time we just call it and we just glue it on there. So that's pretty much where I'm at. So let's glue some things. And then let's move on and make an easier one where I can just use things out of my spring bucket. <laughs> I was determined to make a neutral one and a Tim Holtz one, and two for my spring journal. So I'm going to stay with you guys, and I'm going to make those. I'm not abandoning it. I'm not quitting. I'm not a quitter, even though probably sometimes I should be. So I'm going to glue this on first. I'm going to go ahead and glue it almost all the way to the top. I'm just leaving a little bit of the base showing there. This is one very sturdy. Oh, Cheryl, what was it called again? Topper. One very sturdy flip 
Topper, Topper. Oh my gosh, what was it called again? Let's glue this flower on. As high as we can get that flower. Page topper flip over. Page topper flip over. Page topper flip over. Page topper flip over. So, page topper flip over. Then for the butterfly, I'm going to use our glitter because we already have several layers and he's kind of thick anyway. Oh wait, we want tickets first. At least I think we want tickets. Yeah, we definitely want tickets. Tickets are gonna get our glitter too. <laughs> so I'm gonna use some Anna Griffin flowers and some wallpaper for these other ones that go in the spring journal. Some things that hopefully will be quicker and easier. And then that neutral one, I am going to stick some other layer of lacy material on there. And a little label or something. See, I think the problem was is I just didn't want to cover up the music roll paper after I stuck it on there. But it just needed to be covered. It just did. I'm going to leave. No, I'm not. I was thinking about leaving this stick over the edge, but... These little flowers will just get ripped off. So they'll go. And you shouldn't cut glued things with your fussy cutting scissors like I just did. But you know. Okay. So we didn't use this little double orange flower. I don't think we're putting it on anything else. <laughs> we don't want to sit here for an hour while I look at this stuff again. So let's use things we know will work with Spring Journal out of the Spring Journal bucket. So this is what we ended up with. We, I am going to stick something through this hole. I'm not sure what yet. But we ended up with that on the front, and it's cute, and I really like that. And we ended up with that on the back. And I don't mind it. I just didn't want to cover up all my music roll paper. But in the end, it worked out perfectly. In my opinion, that looks nice. I don't know if everyone says it looks nice, but I think it looks nice. So that's what we have for that one. Um, these guys. Can I get those way up there? I can. Okay. These guys. Let me grab this bucket. I have some tiny, dainty roses. Very nice. Thank you, Lisa Marie. You got a plan? Okay, Cheryl, you share with you share with me your plan. You share it. Share it, Cheryl. <laughs> I can't even speak now. Share it, Cheryl. And then I promise don't let me go without making me show you what I actually did and look at that seam binding and see if it's dry. Okay. I have German scrap flowers, but I'm going to use Anna Griffin on these. These are the little thingies that I wanted for labels. We have so very simple little piece of embossed paper. Um, we 
We could do a couple of those. A little piece of embossed paper. I'm good with that. Okay. Anna Griffin flowers are in this bin. I just keep them in this bin. Um, what I would like to do is tear a piece of this embossed paper. You can see you can't really. Um, and cover up part of this with it. And this could be the back or this could be the front. I'm not really sure what yet. Or maybe we want to go like I think we do from the top. Okay, so we'll go from the top with that. And then we just need a flower that coordinates um, with that. I'm sorry, I cannot, cannot see. But like that's super cute. And that was so simple. So very simple. There's this taller one, but it's kind of giant on there. Nope, the first one was better. I can't fit everything in the camera right now. Um, so yeah. Under lady with scalloped edges to outside. And wait a minute. She has a plan for me. Take tour paper doily put under lady frame. Lady frame. Oh, the lady frame. Okay. You're telling me what to do with that one? Hang on a second. Got to go to the top. <laughs> JMH, you didn't miss hardly anything. It took me, um, what, two hours to make one piece. Take tour paper do doily. Tour paper doily. That goes back up there. Those go over there. Tour paper doily and put it under the frame. Then tiny roses up the side. Right, but it's not going to stay neutral if I put pink roses on it. <laughs> My whole thing with this one is I needed it for a neutral journal. So I was trying to keep it neutral. Tiny roses up the side. Oh, Lisa's telling her. <laughs> under lady with scalloped edges to outside under lady with scalloped edges to outside i think i did that yes flip the ruffles to the left the ruffles to the left <laughs> i don't really think it matters which way they go but that's where we were at with that one. And then um, it needs a little more. But, I mean, we could use regular lace or that. That's where we were on that one. No, no. Disregard. No, no. This, wait. This is so hard when you guys cannot actually talk to me. No, scalloped of doily to outside on the left. Outside on the left. So you want the scallops to go here and the frame to go there. <laughs> so this is where we're at with that one if we do that. And it is neutral. And that would be totally fine to decorate this side of it. In fact, we'll just do it and that way this side of this one is done, right? So let's just do it. We didn't glue this down yet either. And this paper is kind of fragile. So I'm just, especially over the dots um, for the braille, I'm just going to glue the whole braille paper. I'm getting some on there to begin with. And then we'll go across here. So we're getting this paper down. We're getting this side of this one done. And then we will worry about the other side of this one after I do the ones for the spring journal. Now I will tell you in Cheryl's video, 
She made several of these within just a you know little bit of time. She did not take an hour and 45 minutes to do one piece of it. <laughs> but in all fairness, Cheryl's a master. <laughs> I'm going to use art glitter on this doily just because it's going to be easier than having to do um, glue stick on it right now. Any pieces that are left up when I am done, I will go through and glue again. But for now, we're getting it down. And you said to the left. So. Sticky. Your brain is hyper. <laughs> That lace is in your pile to the left. Uh-oh. You wanted me to use a different lace and I use a paper doily? It's so weird whenever I'm trying to figure out what you guys are saying. It's like a bad game that we're playing. <laughs> Try the lace. You can put the ribbon and run it through all the way to the opposite side. With neutral roses, LOL. <laughs> they don't have brown roses. They don't have neutral roses. I mean, I'm sure I do somewhere, but where that is at the moment, I don't know. Um, I would like to make something with little uh, rose embellishments, though. So if you guys want to hang out and watch me um, a little longer, I'll get out some roses. Some little rose embellishments that are made out of, um, they're like embroidered roses. And we can do some things with those. See, to me... It, it's perfectly acceptable, right? Like, we'll do whatever with that. But it's perfectly acceptable. However, it just needs a little more right there. <laughs> just needs a little more right there. We'll figure something out. But for now, we've got that down. It's not naked. We're, we're working on it. Let's go back to the spring ones. Then pastel pink. Roses up the right. Cheryl, I cannot do it. It has to be neutral. <laughs> You cannot do it, Cheryl. <laughs> We're making two different journals. Um, I need to put these somewhere. But I did find in that Tim Holtz little pack of flowers, there was the perfect little shabby roses that were going up a line like that. And I'm not sticking them on there, but I might show them to you. Um... Not those. They're somewhere. Well, there was, anyway. I don't know where it's at. I don't know if I spent an hour looking for it, but there were these really pretty little shabby flowers in this little bin. Like, these ones are the most neutral of all of the ones I've seen so far. Most neutral. I mean, that's not horrible, and I could call that neutral still. They're not pink. They are kind of a brown. Pastel pink is almost neutral. Mm-hmm. 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 Anyway, there we go for that. Let's go back to spring before I lose my train of thought. So you know that we've been decorating things like this, and it just it's super easy, right, and effective. Um, I was going to look for a slightly different flower. Like there are so many little shabby roses in the Anna Griffin thingies. I really like the darker pink in that. Yeah. Okay, let's do that one on that side and then we'll switch it and do something different on the other side. So I'm going to attempt to use um, glue stick for this handmade paper. So it's handmade paper that I embossed. And I'm going to attempt to use glue stick on it. And then I just cut over, cut off whatever I didn't use. I was thinking like a little vine of roses. I know, Cheryl, but I don't have a little vine of roses that are neutral colors. So 
So there is the front side of this one. This little strip is savable. We can use it. Use that for something. We don't know what, but something. And then we will stick these on. And like, it's very simple, but I'm going to put lace underneath of it. So it'll be good. Cheryl will tell me where I can get a little vine of neutral roses at. Do you have a magical on-demand source of little vines of shabby neutral roses? Come on, glue. I need to put it in the bin upside down so that it goes down to the bottom. Cheryl, I still would like to see a tutorial on making the perfect bow. I know you say that you just do it and it is what it is, but all of your bows and the way that you like sew the ribbon so that it is perfectly ruffled, those are gorgeous. And I would like to see some tutorials on some bows and some ribbon, please. Let's find some lace to put down there. There was that giant pile of offcuts of lace. Um, I think I want it to go on the underside of it so that we just see lace sticking out. A different lace though. But yes, I would like to see just lace on it. The reason I'm just going to keep using my favorite lace over and over and over again. There's this piece. That's kind of cute. And there's this, which is my favorite. So if I use him, he's got to go underneath so that he can just dangle like that. And then maybe a trim across the top. We'll see. Let's glue that there, though. Am I going to stick it on the front? Yes. OK. Hello, Corey. This is our Friday night craft with me live. I do it every Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tonight, um, I am working, well, a lot of us are working on spring journals together. And so um, the things I'm making tonight are for that journal for the most part. Right now, I am working on a challenge. It is a challenge in the Facebook group, Boho Daydreams. Oh, sorry. And so um, that's what I'm trying to work on now. And they are, oh my gosh, age topper flip overs. Is that what they're called? Did I actually remember it this time? I'm not sure if that's actually what it's called, but age topper flip overs, is that what it's called? I am not trying to be disrespectful. I literally just cannot remember at the moment. They have told me a couple of times. <laughs> Hello, Jean. I used that trim at bottom of inside of your journal. Joyce, did you post it? I think I saw somebody do that. Was it you? So anyway. I'm sticking some lace on there. Now I wish I would have stuck it on the inside. Just getting it straight. So I'm going to need to put some trim on this. Um, it's just not the desired look, I don't think. That's OK. That's not working for me. <laughs> That's not working for me. Let's try that again. So I don't like how it's just plain on the top of it. We're going to have to do some other kind of embellishment there. Let me snip off some yellow flowers and we will see how those look. Yellow flowers are right here. So yellow flowers might be too much yellow. 
I don't hate that. It's kind of hard for you guys to see it probably, but I don't hate that. Let's do that. So this piece, let me snip it where I actually am going to have a nice section of lace to work with. So I like when I use this lace to mind where my little points are going to be. And I didn't do it the first time, and that's what made me unhappy about it. <laughs> so I'm going to put glue on this again, and we're going to do it again. So right now I'm just making general ephemera um, and, and stuff for that challenge. Like I'll use these in the spring journal that I'm working on. But there are a bunch of us that do the same journal kit, and we work on it together. And we post in Facebook groups so that we all can see it. Oh, I know you guys are trying to help and I appreciate that. Tonight is a night where I just, I have indecisiveness and a little bit of, um, I don't know, cloudy mind, I guess. In all fairness, I have had that all day, but <laughs> It didn't get as bad as this until I uh, turned the camera on. So yeah, I'm going to do this little yellow trim over the top of this lace. I like the dangliness of this lace, but I want to cover up the top of the lace because it's just that straight line and I didn't want to see it. So I'm going to put these little yellow flowers over it. And I think this is going to look really, really cute in our spring journal. No, I totally like it. I, you're welcome to always offer advice. I do not get upset. Hopefully I never said anything like that. I don't care. No. You guys help as much as you want to help. I don't care. You guys know if something... Like it, not that any of you guys are being like this, but if something bothered me, I would tell you. I'm totally fine with it. I ask for help and opinions and I appreciate it. So that is just, it really needs to dry for a second, but I'm been patient. I want to see what it looks like. We'll do a final adjustment and trim, but I think that's really, really cute. Really, really cute. And again, I didn't get my loop that I wanted on that side. I'm going to just have to live with it at some point. And I guess that some point is now. But that's what that looks like. I really like the little yellow flowers on it. Now, is it going to be bulky? Yes, it is. But not too terribly. And it's removable, right? You can easily take this off the page. You made entirely different runs my journal and then the ones I made of the video. Yep. So is anyone doing the challenge that's in here? Because I know Cheryl, obviously, you know, she's she's posting and doing it. Is anyone else doing the challenge? I think it is just. Mm, it's just the way this lace is lining up. That is really bothering me over and over and over again. And if I keep it up, I'm going to tear my card. But I can't be happy with it until it's perfect. And I know I shouldn't care about perfection, right? Because there's all the things that people say about it. But to me, it's bothering me. So I'm just worried about the points of the lace. Any new people are never coming back after today. <laughs> yeah, I know. It just is what it is sometimes. Okay. I'm happy with that. I know I said that last time too, but. There we go. Better. Much better. Ah. Sticky fingers. 
I know, Lenny. I know. <laughs> In your mind, cat? Yes. Let's do it and let's post. Vanessa, are you going to do the, the challenge? I know you have a lot going on, so I'm not trying to pressure you. Just asking. Okay. The all important trimming of the point. We're going to live with it. We're just going to live with it. We're not going to care that one of them is slightly longer than the other one. Right? Or we're just going to keep trimming it and then be unhappy in a second when it's like totally wrong. <laughs> so anyway, we made this front side of that one. And now we're going to flip it over in a second when that one is dry and do the other one. Let's do something. Let me get this giant glue bubble out of my um, Fabri-Tac. And then let's do something on the other one while that dries. This is the other one. I could very easily just do the same thing on that side. Let's do that because then I can use one of my little bows. Let me get my little bow that I'm trying to use. Actually, we could use lots of things, but... I have these super sweet um, ribbon embroidery. They're little roses that are ribbon embroidered with ribbon. Can you guys see that? These are so, so fun to make and so cute. Oh my gosh, there they are. It's a little tiny pink rose with two little flowers next to it. And I would like to use it with some of this embroidered or um, embossed paper. If the little rose doesn't work, I'll use it somewhere else, but let's try with this one. Well, we're off to a great start. And then we need a flower. You need some of those roses, Cheryl. I'm gonna put them in a package and send them to you. Okay, so this one is obviously going to be very um, shabby and sweet in color. And all of my little shabby sweet roses are up here in the front. So let's try to find little shabby sweet roses. Hmm. I don't know if I can do rose under rose though. It doesn't really look the greatest. There's a big one. That's the literal same flower that I used last time. There's a little peachy one. See, I don't think I can do this, though, can I? It's too much flower. Too much flower. I want to use this on something, though. Is it going to go there, Cheryl, at the bottom of that frame? Here's a little shabby one. That's kind of, cu kind of cute. There's like a dark pink one. Hmm. Here's a butterfly. Can I use a butterfly in a rose? No, I cannot. I was thinking I could line them up and make like a little chain of them, but I have to find the right thing to decorate it with first. I kind of like that one. It would be too much. I can't do it on that, but I want to use it on something. I'm going with that on that side. And then we'll probably do the same lace. They'll be in different journals, so it's not going to matter. But we'll probably do the same lace. And then I'll put a trim across the bottom. Just try putting the rose, but don't use it. Just, in, just 
type in the rules for joint music. Just by ribbon rose by the framed lady. So you can see the ribbon rose by the framed lady would be very, very cute. Because you could do it like right here at the bottom of the frame. Now, if I did this pink, you would need some pink roses somewhere probably or something pink on here. But you could also turn these and do them. Like I know the frame has a nice top, but you could do it top and bottom. We could do it, but we're going to have to add something else and it kind of like the Braille. I don't know. I wouldn't necessarily use Braille with Shabby. But that's that little thing. Well, I, I told you guys on Tuesday I was going to pull down the bin of flowers. There's like hundreds of different kinds of little applique flowers. We'll have to do that next Tuesday because we didn't get to it this Tuesday. Let me do this real quick. Ribbon roses on the frame. <laughs> So cute. So cute. There's your line of neutral roses. They're pink, though. They're pink. I don't know why I'm trying to glue that handmade paper. It's just going to eat my glue stick. They're pink, not neutral, but pink. So I'm just art glittering or attempting to art glitter the torn edge of this and the border so that it will stay down. And then I put glue stick for the rest. Okay, so there's that part. Let's glue those on. Maybe. <laughs> okay. So I'm making this one exactly the same. Basically. Okay. They are neutral if you're half blind. <laughs> well, I don't know if we're going to use it or not. But I am going to fight with some lace on this pocket. Um, on this pocket. And I'm probably just going to use one of these ones we already used and just recut it. Can I? Mm. Yes. I can get that one to work. <laughs> you guys are so cute. I love how you are encouraging me even on a bad creative day. That's awesome. So here's this. And let's put this lease on. Now, I do have other roses. Cheryl, would you like to see the other ones? And then if I cut this point off this one, I will be happy. Okay. I should have did that a long time ago. Um, I could use the same little yellow flowers on that. I mean, honestly, it's super cute. Because there's yellow up here. I have to come, I have to trim the pink paper off. What do you guys think about that? Should I trim the pink paper so you can really see it? Or should I get some pink flowers and put pink flowers down there? Next time, fold it in half and cut the ends the same. Yes. Definitely. Instead of fighting with it a thousand times. I'm going to stick this yellow on this one, and then we will make the other sides of both of these different. Would white roses be neutral? Yes, they would. I don't know if they have any white roses. 
I don't know. White roses. I have to look at this like so many times to see which side is the front and which side is the back. That little piece that I snipped just happened to go on both of them perfectly. <laughs> Yellow. <laughs> These ones are neutral, and I could do those ones down there like that if we had to have roses on it. They could go there if we had to. Okay, so now we're going to let that one dry, and we're going to work on the other side of this one. So as of now, we have it just like that. He may get something else. I don't, I'm not sure. But we're going to work on this side now. This side, I want to be something different. I don't want to do the same. And I don't know how you guys feel about it. But let's try to get some Tim Holtzy little thingies on here. I think we could. I think they could go good enough. Found the right color combination. Like this one has a little bit of blue. So this is the same color as this little thingy here in this little ticket strip. So we could get like a little strip of that on here. But the problem is, what do you mix with these little strips? What do you put on there with a strip? With like the strip of flowers. What do you put on with that? I've never used his little strips before. What do you put? These are the roses you're asking for. Are you asking for these? Are you asking for something like that? <laughs> I'm just teasing you at this point. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what you layer with the strips. The insides of my flips, I wasn't. I was leaving them so that people could write on the insides. Like, what do you layer with these? Somebody tell me what you layer with these. Hmm? Or do you cut them apart like I was originally going to do? Where's the purple one? There's like yellow and purple. Maybe you just cut them apart. I'm not sure. I can't, I cannot work with those. <laughs> Secret journal spots. That's what I was kind of thinking. Well, I know because I used cardstock, right? But I think that you need to put something there. I wouldn't just leave it plain like that. You, you need to decorate a little bit. I mean, in my opinion, you need to decorate a little bit. So, I have these little um, labels. We could use one of these as a label, but we need some kind of focal point on there. Get my scraps. Um, more scraps. Set those off to the side because we're probably going to use those. I have wallpaper in here. I have botanical book pages. I've got other little soft embellishments. What about the Tim Holtz wallpaper flowers? Those are kind of these color tones. Get back in there. So they're kind of those muted color tones. We could layer something. I mean, it's just a flower and a flower though. I don't know. You know what? Um, uh. 
<laughs> Secret journal spots are a great idea. They are. I have these little vintage ladies. I don't know if we would put them on here or not, but I did want to try to use them. So these came from Amazon. They're these little vintage lady stickers. I don't know if Amazon still has them. I bought them a long time ago. But I wanted to try to use some of these in this journal. It almost looks like they're at like a backyard barbecue with the banners. They look like little um, sewing pattern people. I don't know. We could use one of those. But what with is the question. So that's the pink ones of those. They came in every color. Um, we could use one of those and maybe like some, if we're gonna use the vintage lady, I mean, it really does not go, but I'm gonna find somewhere else to put these. <laughs> I'm gonna find somewhere else to put these. Housewives of the 60s, yes. Yeah. To be honest, I don't usually put a lot of sentiments on the things that I make, and it's because I have found that people are very picky about their sentiments. So, yeah. Sadly, I don't do that very much. Um, let me see what else I have in here, because I'm sure there's printed things. Like, I could put a bird, a butterfly, I could layer up a doily on there and do a doily and a bird. I mean, there's lots of things I guess we could do. I have these cute little pictures of these little girls. I know that I just make this harder than it really needs to be. And then it just makes me frustrated because I know I'm making it harder than it really needs to be. There's washi flowers. Here's a pile of ephemera that we made. I'm pull that out and put it up here. There's more Anna Griffin flowers. Um, I have the ice coupons. And then I have a bunch of pages of collage. Okay, I found the small little fairy that I was looking for earlier. I do have everything, Joyce. It's kind of bad to have everything, though. It makes me feel guilty sometimes. Yeah. I was experiencing some guilt earlier when I realized how much um, things I still have that I need to share with everyone. And yeah. So having lots of things is a blessing and a curse sometimes. Can I get like vintage? <laughs> this is just such a sweet little picture. This one is from Ruby and Pearl. It's a little girl with butterfly wings. She probably came off of a French postcard at one point. Um, what else do I have? Maybe it just needs a bird. Maybe we need to put some book page and a bird on it and call it a day need a bird. Yeah, but you know, like sometimes the weight of all the things that you have, like it just doesn't feel good. So there's that. I don't know. 
I know that I'm very fortunate and I'm very fortunate to have friends that, you know, help me out with my, my, uh, collection of things, but yeah. Sometimes it just feels gluttonous, you know, to like splurge on certain things or whatever, you know. I bought some beads recently that were kind of spendy, but I really liked them. I'll show them to you when they get here. They haven't been shipped yet. Okay, so here is a doily. And I think we can put that in the background somewhere. I'm not sure where. I can't use her with it. I don't even know if I can get a doily on there. A doily would have been really cute to put over the top and wrap it around so that you could actually like decorate both sides at the same time. We should probably do that with one. So we'll save that one now that I cut it out. <laughs> Yep. Yep. And it, it's not like this all the time. It's really not. It's just some days you're in the mindset and, and it all just flows out perfectly. And other days my mind is somewhere else and I'm thinking about something else and it's just creativity is a little harder. I'm a little more um, indecisive about things. And it's just my mind thinking about 10 million things at the same time, probably. But eventually, I'm going to find what I want for the back of this, and we're going to move on. What if we put, like, music as a second background? Because I know there's a background on that. But what if we put music on the back? <laughs> yeah, there's just times I think where it's harder. Okay, I'm liking music on it. I might pull it up a little bit so we can see more of the other background, but I am liking the music up there. That's fine. I don't know that I want this bird. He's kind of giant, but let's see. We will loosely cut him out. So I'm looking forward to antique shopping tomorrow. It's nice, mindless activity to walk around and look at some things. And even though there will not be that much actual antiques, there will be lots of vintage things that I can remember having. And uh, sometimes I'm shocked by, you know, how much things are worth that I, you know, I really just had them recently. But now they're at the antique store. <laughs> so that's kind of fun. I generally, like I said, don't buy a whole lot there because I don't find a whole lot there, but. I don't know that it works well with my background. No, definitely across the bottom. Hmm. Well. I'm going to glue stuff down. <laughs> I'm going to glue stuff down now. Uh oh, I spilled flowers. Yeah. Most of us don't video those days, though. 
most of us know that hey it's just not a great day for a video today and so they don't they don't do it but you know i've committed to being here so i'm here and i know that you guys are kind and that you'll hang out with me no matter what so appreciate it i mean there is 18 of you still here so <laughs> they didn't scare you all away yet so what do you guys think about this bird do I need to cut this paper off first, probably, so that you can actually see it? But the little birdie, he is not quite the same style as the other side of this card, the other side of this topper. So I'm not sure. But... So we have this on this side. We have this so far on this side. Can I put this little birdie on here and an ice ticket, or do I need to put something else? I mean, it's just not my favorite. See, that's the problem is nothing is my favorite right now. I'm just in that mood where nothing is my favorite. Do you guys want me to tell you what happened and why I'm having such a hard time? Like, I wasn't going to tell anyone, but I'm just going to tell you guys because you're here and you're struggling with me or you're watching me struggle. The little bird with the ticket. I'm going to do the ticket on the bird. <laughs> but anyway, so you guys know how I, um, I buy things from France and I have them shipped here and I keep some for myself and I craft and then I share um, a lot of the things I get with you guys. Well, I found a new person to buy stuff from and um, they seemed great and all. And it, like, it, it wasn't too good to be true or anything sounding. It sounded fine. And like the person has a, like a shop and everything. Like I thought it was going to be okay, but so I, I pay the person, um, like, I don't know, it was like several thousand dollars for these items, you know, to get them here and everything. And it does not look like they're going to come. And it doesn't look like I'm going to be seeing my money again. So I am a little stressed about that. <laughs> This is the problem with buying from overseas, especially. But yeah, so that is what I have. Now, I think he can be cutesied up a little bit, but that's what I have. So it's just been weighing heavily on my mind because in all the years I've been doing things, I really haven't, like I, I've gotten scammed here or there for a couple hundred dollars or whatever, but I really haven't had a transaction go bad. That was that kind of dollar amount. So I just am a little, I don't know, a little shocked by it, to be honest. I wish I would have stuck a little bit of doily under there. Can I do it still? Yeah, so that's just weighing on me, I think. weighing on me. I like it better with the doily under there. <laughs> yeah, it's more so the, just the person and just like, you know, you thought that you could trust somebody and all of that kind of stuff. It just weighs on me. 
with these scissors? Well, it's just something that's on my mind, you know. I'm sure eventually it will get resolved. It's just a lot of stress until it does. So we have that now. He got better with the doily underneath of him. The doily has the same kind of pink as this ticket. I did tear my ticket, unfortunately, and I don't like that, but it's okay. That's what we have. Am I in love with it? No. Do the, do the two sides match? No. But they will be on different pages of the journal. So honestly, it doesn't really need to be the exact same thing. Am I going to post this? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I will. But this little thingy is sticking up. It's not necessarily that. It's just, you know, I like, I, I believe that people are good and like, you know, like I just, I don't think, I don't like knowing that people could be bad. I guess I just don't like thinking about the fact that people could be bad. And this person might not end up being bad. It might all have some explanation and reason and all work out. I don't know. But right now it's just causing me a lot of stress. Yep. Okay. Well, it's decorated. <laughs> I feel like this is Roxy and I feel like this is not. <laughs> right? Like, but let me just do it on an actual page in the journal and then maybe I'll feel better about it. Where did I put the one journal that we were, that we had a signature for? Where did I stick that? Oh, right here. So for my spring journal, if we used this side, I mean, over top of one of these other pages, yes, it's a lot of birds. You guys can't see. Yes, it's a lot of birds, but it is springy in nature. And then we have like the pretty side. And that was just, actually it's this way, it was two pages. So we have this for that side. And then we have this for that side. I think it's cute. It's very, very cute. Thank you guys. No, they have not Lisa Marie. I think it's good that it's actually two different styles, per se, because, you know, we have both styles. So I think for my journal, it works. Would it work in every journal? Probably not, but let's see where else we could stick this. This one has less birds, so maybe it would be better here. There's many options, probably. This one has no birds, but it is botanical. So you could do it there. And then that. I don't love the back of that one. You could go here, maybe. I like the blue with the blue on him. That's a lot of green, though. <laughs> Anyway, I think it will work for my journal. So after all of that frustration, I think it will work. Now I need to do the other side of the other one. The other two, I guess, because there's a neutral one sitting there. But yeah, he'll definitely work on my journal. So that's fine. There's that one. Let's see what else we can do. Right, Lisa Marie? Yeah, we'll have to see how it works out. Okay, so we didn't use this yet. I didn't do this one. <laughs> I didn't do this one yet. I don't know if I'm going to stick this flower down here or not, but there's that. We need to decorate the back side of this one and the back side of this one. And we'll put those two in the done pile. How are you guys feeling about these two? Lisa Marie, I'm not going to the retreat at this point. I, I want to so very badly. However, um, my son has, he he's disabled and 
he has a lot going on with his health right now. So I'm not able to leave him. My son is an adult, but um, he lives with me. He has some health issues going on right now. So I'm not able to leave him and go there right now. So at this point, the answer is no, I'm not. However, I talk to Sheila about it all the time and it may work out eventually that I can go, but as of right now, no, but um, Vanessa is going and it sounds like it's going to be a fabulous time. Now, Cheryl, if I put pink on that side, I could actually use this cute little fairy girl on this side. So maybe I should just get over it and put the pink on it. Hmm? Is this your advice to me? Get over it and put the pink on it. Shall we put the pink on it? <laughs> <laughs> she will once she gets something behind her. Let me see what we have. <laughs> I guess that's one good thing, though, um, about you guys shopping with me here. You're shopping from somebody who's in the United States, right? It's a lot different when you have to buy from overseas and just trust that people are going to do things that they say and all of that kind of stuff, right? Like at least shopping, you're kind of like shopping local almost. I don't know. Let's tear some of this and put it on this side. I think this time we'll go up from the bottom and leave the braille exposed at the top. Will that work? Mm. Do I want my flower on white? We'll try it. Oh, it's not incredible. I'm just saying there is a little bit safer of a transaction when the person at least is in the same country as you are. You know? There's that. So, can't see my, where I put my glue now. So I'm going to tear it. Paper is just shredding as I tear it. It is very thin rag paper. I need a tear ruler. Where did I put my ruler? I've lost it. It's right here in front of my face. Did you guys tell me that? Were you guys yelling at your screen? Ooh, glue. This is very old paper. <laughs> Maybe we'll see. I still want to have faith. You guys don't stress about it. I didn't, you know, want you guys to stress about it. No matter what, I will be okay. And it will all work out how it's supposed to work out, I guess, you know. It's okay. So, I'm sorry, Cheryl. I was just kind of making a joke about the pink. <laughs> Good night, Kat. Thanks for joining me. Sorry it wasn't the best one, but you know, they can't all be good, right? <laughs> Not that they usually are either, but anyway, I appreciate you joining me. Thanks so much for hanging out. 
I am having fun making this challenge. And I know I'm making this challenge look really, really difficult. But honestly, go and watch um, Cheryl's video and you'll see it's much, much easier than I'm making it look. And hers look amazing. She uses a lot of lace um, and adds uh, that as a layer too. So she does a lot different things than I do. Where are those pieces of lace? I still have this guy. Can we get that on there somewhere? It's just like the weirdest cut of lace. I just can't figure out how to get this piece to work on here. No, it's just not the right cut of lace. Let's try a different one. I know you guys are like, oh, I'm so over your indecisiveness. <laughs> um, let me see what else we have. For layering lace. Honestly, I really want to use this. Let me cut more of a flat piece. Like that was right on the border. Let me cut more of a flat piece. And so when I cut things and they don't work out, obviously I don't throw them away. I just put them in a bin and use them for something else later. Like this one's a little too big, but that's okay. I will cut it down. So if I trim off the edges of the lace, something like that. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do some lace on this one. I just want to shabby up this lace a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is just try pulling it with my fingers because I just freshly cut it. And I want to just tear it a little bit and fringe it up. It's just too perfect for me. And so I like to just work with it in my hand at first. And try to get the edges to look a little less perfect. A little more freed. I'm not sure I'm using these Tim Holtz flowers, but they're a placeholder for now. And we have this on that side. And obviously we're going to put some flowers there. We do have this, but it doesn't go there either. So I think I'm going to do that on this one. Oh. <laughs> a slumber party yep a slumber party would be awesome i'm just gonna have to kind of tack this where it's kind of open in spots so i'm just gonna tack it where there is a place to tack it I think we should do that. That's a great idea. Like a slumber party where we maybe um, go from like different crafters houses to different crafters houses on the live. So um, we can see different people making different things. I think that might be kind of fun. Like obviously it can't really be a slumber party because people have jobs and things, but we could get together some night and go from house to house and see different people working. Of course they did. <laughs> Don't have a channel. Like a Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, kind of like that. You know we have to go to Vanessa's. Now that I got that down, it looks awfully square again. So I'm trying to pull it and gather it a little bit. Let's put her down. You know how some crafters only use our glitter glue or not our glitter Fabri-Tac. They only use Fabri-Tac. No matter what they're making, they just use Fabri-Tac. Like um, Heather at Ruby and Pearl, I think she just used Fabri-Tac all the time. Now maybe she used Art Glitter sometime where I didn't see her, but I haven't watched every single video, but I've watched a lot of them. And I think she just crafts with Fabri-Tac. And I have seen a lot of other crafters only craft with Fabri-Tac. Am I going to use these flowers or am I not going to use these flowers? The wine. You know, I wish I could drink wine because it would probably help me relax and go to sleep at night, but I cannot. Okay. So we have this, this little doily thing that is sticking up is bothering me. So I'm going to cut it off. Chocolate. Now I'm, I'm down for some chocolate. Vanessa. So what do you guys think about those flowers? Are the flowers just like a little too modern? A little too new? Shiny Tim Holtz flowers. Or should I stick them here? Should I find another one and stick them in both places? I kind of like this one here. And it's very neutral. So that one on that side and this one on this side. Are these flowers good here? I don't know. I can see what other flowers we have to choose from, but it might be an hour. <laughs> no, they're different, different heathers. They're, they're both friends. They know each other pretty well and they're both friends, but they are different people and different channels. Did she? I didn't know that. Interesting. I really liked, um, I like both of them, but I really like the videos that um, Heather at Rose Hill Paper Cottage does. I love her flip throughs of her journals. I really like this one, but you would have to cut it down. That one's kind of good too. I don't know. These ones are all very shiny in this Tim Holtz bin. Lost sound? Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay. Let me glue this flower down because I think we're going to put it right there. I think that is fine. It's not the best, but I think it's fine. And I could use Fabri-Tac, but I'm going to use our glitter. I think I'm going to have to redo this challenge, and I'm going to just use all antique paper. When I use all antique paper, everything just goes together nicely. And I'm really struggling to get the Tim Holtz to go with the old paper I am trying to use. On the Braille, you really do have to push things down when you glue them. Um, you guys didn't answer me about this flower, I don't think, so I'm just gonna glue it. There's one on the other side, so I guess there's one on this side too. I watch people's hands and voices. What does that mean? 
Oh, I see. You didn't see their face, so you didn't know they were different people. Yeah. I get it now. So what prompted her to move to Great Britain, I wonder? Somebody that follows her more than I do will probably know the answer because I didn't even know she moved to Great Britain. Making my lace a little more rowdy in places. So there's what we have for that one and this one. Now, do we want lace or something? Do I want to cut the corners? It just seems like it needs something else down underneath here. Do we want to try like over a page so that we can see? I don't think it's going to go in this journal because it's just a different style, but. Yes, Lisa Marie. But which one moved? <laughs> You're not peeping. So, okay. Who lost her husband and who moved? Now I'm asking for gossip. So, in this one, this is not really the style for this journal. Like, I'm not saying it can't go in here, but. I don't think it's going to go in here. I mean, it's not really a sturdy page, but you guys cannot see again. It's not really a sturdy page, but it could go over a regular book page. I'm looking to see if it will go in this one or if it will just go in my ephemera collection. I could stick it over coffee dyed paper. I just don't think it's the style for this one. I just don't know if I can use it. Heather Nagy from Ruby and Pearl lost her husband over a year ago. I did not know that. I'm sorry. Sorry to hear that. That's very sad. Oh, and her husband wanted to move. I see. You guys know everything, or Lisa knows everything. Goodness. Well, thank you for filling me in. Obviously over cabbage dyed paper. That's awesome. And you don't lose any writing space. I guess that's kind of the point. I'm going to glue some writing space inside of this one just because you're not going to be able to write over the bumps unless you do put something over. So I'm going to glue some writing space over it. I don't know if it will end up going in this journal. There's places where it could go, but... Do you guys really think this is going to go in the same journal as this? Like, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. But there's those ones. I bet she was. That's awesome. <laughs> we love you, creepy. Vanessa, you are hilarious. Hilarious. Okay, so we just have the back of this one, and then we will have completed in about four hours, four pieces of ephemera. <laughs> so, uh, we are out of time. Um, let me show you quickly the things that I made while I was off camera, and then you guys can... I know I said I wasn't going three hours today, but then I did go three hours today, so... 
there's that. Um, let me show you the things I made quick. Lisa Marie, right? Because we have a Lisa Maria, but Lisa Maria and Lisa Marie are two different people. And I want to make sure I have it right in my mind, too. So Lisa, is it Lisa Marie with an E? Because in our group of crafters or shoppers on Tuesdays, we also have a Lisa Maria. But that, you're Lisa Maria. I see. I see. So I'm calling you Lisa Marie and it's Lisa Maria. Hmm. I gotta make them, I gotta adjust my notes. There are so many of you now, and, and I am very thankful that there are so many. I'm not complaining. There are so many of you that there are multiple different like people for every single name. And then we go to like first name and or last, you know, first name and first initial of last name. And there's even multiples of those now. So now we're having to like use your whole name and yeah. There's a lot of you now. That's awesome. Super appreciative. Let me, where's my bin? Over here. Show you what I've been up to. So this is a pile of ephemera. Okay. So that's what I made today. Do you remember there was a night and I made this one little journal card? That's all I made was one little journal card. There's the one with the bird on him. Those all still need finished. And then there are all the bases for me to make more. So those are still here unfinished. I do have finished ephemera in here somewhere. There was this tag that I was working on. I did not finish it, but there was that tag I was working on. There was this tag that I was working on. This tag that I was working on. These things that you guys have seen, right? The little folio. And I have decided that I'm going to cut these into tag shape. All of them into tag shape. I just haven't done it yet. You guys saw these. These are the pockets that we made last week. I did glue on the little cluster. These two need decorated still. This is the flip out that I made and I made more of them. I made four more of them. So I'm going to be making these maybe next time even. The little flip outs that we make out of book pages. They're little flip out pockets. So we're going to be making some more of or decorating and making these next time. I kind of forgot they were in here. I would have made them tonight. Um, I think we made this together. I put lace on these. I made a bunch more of these little pockets and I, I've been adding lace to them. And I think I am going to put a little embellishment um, on them. But I made enough for all three of my journals. And I made enough of these pockets. These little guys. I made enough of those for all of my journals. This is the tag that we made last time. And he's going to go in there, I think. And then another taller tag will go in the back. I made another set of them for all of my journals. And there's the tag. I don't know if this one's going here or if this one's going here yet. There's those. I did these pockets. They're just little doily embellished pockets. I don't love all of them, but I do love some of them. And these are the wallpaper tags that we need. And so I just stuck those with whatever coordinating doily. There's those. Then, let me see if there's anything else in here. I felt like I did more. There is not. No. Nope. There is not. That's
that's all I've done. You found those little doilies? Were they um, Kylie from Paper Daisy Journals? <laughs> I like Joyce and Penny. <laughs> well, I didn't do all of that today, but I did work on my covers today because my covers were not even done at all. So I did that at least. And plus, I put all of your stuff away in your boxes and that took like hours. <laughs> <laughs> I think the little doilies are Kylie from Paper Daisy Journals. I think they are. So anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. I'll switch the camera back here in a second. Um, we need to do a giveaway. However, I didn't do that in the beginning like I said I was going to. So when we do it next week, we're going to give away two. So we're going to give, I'll do it and draw, or I don't even have it prepared. So I will make sure that I cut it off for who posted over the last seven days and do that drawing tonight. But I will tell you guys at the beginning of the next show, and there will be another giveaway at the beginning of the next show for this coming week. So every post that you make starting tomorrow or starting today, I don't know when the cutoff is, but Whenever the cutoff is throughout the next week, that will be for the next time's drawing. So there will be two winners next time. Does that make sense? I completely forgot about it, guys. I'm so sorry. My brain is just not, it's not there right now. It's not there. I really did end up liking the Tim Holtz one. And I think that in a Tim Holtz like botanical kind of journal, that would be really cute. So that's where we left off. We have that guy, and we have this. That is all I did for three hours. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys. <sighs> I don't know if Craft With Me Lives are always a great idea. <laughs> There's just times, right, where it's just not, uh, not the day for that. So anyway, I appreciate you guys joining me. I will be here next Tuesday um, at, I was wearing glasses, so I've read marks on the face. Um, I will be here next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the live sale. And I will be here next Friday for the craft with me. Um, what am I going to say? We'll do the giveaways at the beginning of both of those because we have the early bird giveaway for the live sale on Tuesday. I'll do the giveaway, two giveaway prizes for the Craft With Me Live next time. I apologize, I should have did it now. Penny, there isn't a Facebook group of mine, but what I do is I post and share um, everything that I'm doing here at the channel with my moderator, who is Vanessa, who is in chat, and she has a Facebook group called Junk Journal Junction. That is where most of us go and post and hang out. And that's where a lot of the posts for the spring journal are happening are in the Junk Journal Junction group. They're also happening on Instagram and Boho Daydreams and a couple of other places. So best thing to do if you want to see spring journal progress is look at Junk Journal Junction first. And then from there, you'll find the people who are posting and see where else they're posting. Give me the answer. I never win. Aww. Yes. Most of us are Junk Journal Junction and Boho Daydreams. And yeah, I don't really use, I'm not that active on social media because of time. Like I just, it's really hard for me to find the time to do all of the posts and things like that. And I know people have told me that there's automated like things and whatever that you could use or do. But honestly, I don't know anything about those and I'm really too busy to figure it out. So for now I do old school where I post, you know, the live sale links and I post the craft with me information when I get the journal kits ready and stuff like that. But not super active on there because mostly I share with you guys here. But lots of people in our group post over at Junk Journal Junction. So if you want to see, that's where they are. Okay, I'm going to let you guys go. Have a great weekend. Thank you so much for joining me. Sorry. Um, 
<laughs> it was a little difficult tonight. But hey, you know, it's life. So it is what it is. French Book of Psalms. Probably, Carol. Not off the top of my head that I know of, but probably. There are some pictures coming um, to all of my social media soon that will be the um, teaser, the preview for the live sale on Tuesday. I photographed them the other day, so you guys watch for the teaser photos. They'll be coming um, probably on Monday before the Tuesday sale. Good night, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Vanessa, for being here and helping out and answering questions. I appreciate it. And I will talk to you guys all soon. Bye-bye.